Let's get back to our breaking story of the massive bridge collapse, the Fern um, Hollow Bridge in Point Breeze. We are joined now by U.S. Representative Connor Lamb from the South Hills. Uh, Representative Lamb, can you hear us okay? I can hear you great. Great. Joining us by phone. First of all, tell us what was your reaction when you heard about what happened? Um, you know, just incredibly relieved that nobody was killed uh, and the injuries sound like th those people are all going to be okay. Um, proud of the first responders that got down there quick and got everybody out. But then it was really when I saw it in person, the pictures do not convey just how, how large of a, a gap this is and, and how far of a drop and, and the cars are just, you know, on top of each other and, and all crumpled up. It's hard to believe that nobody was killed. It really is. Representative Lamb, you were on site with the president uh, just moments ago. Uh, what was the conversation with him like? I imagine that he was also in awe seeing this. He was, and you know, he was asking about the people involved. He was talking to all the police and firefighters. Um, you know, so that's where his heart is. But he was talking about all of the years that went into getting that infrastructure bill. You know, I've only been in Congress four years, but he's been doing this a very, very long time. And and they knew all along that things like this would happen if we didn't invest in fixing our, our bridges in particular. And, and so, you know, he's happy that no one was killed and that hopefully we can avert future accidents at exactly this time by doing the infrastructure work we need to do on time. And uh, Representative Lamb, when you see this and then you know that we have so many structurally deficient bridges as well as roads in our area, where do we start with this money? Well, you know, they have a they have a rating system. PennDOT looks at that, as do others, to determine, you know, what, what are the oldest and what are the most in need of repair. So they're going to do it in an orderly fashion. Um, but the key is that, you know, we, we have to, one of the points that emerged today is the firefighters and police officers are now going to have to change how they respond to areas when right. bridges are shut down, right, whether they fall down or whether they're closed to be fixed. And so we have to be conscious of how we're keeping our community safe. Uh, at the same time that we're doing all this work. I, I had actually heard that from uh, someone from Local One, the firefighter union, on that very thing, that there is going to be a rerouting of things uh, because of this. This is a, a heavily traveled bridge, a heavily traveled road. So while those repairs are made. One other thing I wanted to just touch on, uh, we have heard from so many people who are, you know, weren't traveling on this bridge at the time, but are taking it almost at a personal level because of how many bridges we have in the area that we take for granted that we can travel over them safely. And we knew this, this bridge had gotten some poor marks from PennDOT. How many of our other bridges are in the same kind of condition? Uh, not to make anybody unnecessarily scared, but again, it's something that we need to keep in mind. Absolutely. All this stuff that we're trying to do, whether it's with the bridges or the locks and dams or even just the roads themselves, is we're, we're trying to fix the basics that people take for granted every day. It's like oxygen. You know, you never appreciate it or think about it until there's not enough of it. And, you know, our bridges and roads are the things that, that keep our local economy and, and our society running every day. And, and the people who fix them uh, need to get out there and, and work on it. But they needed money from Washington. It's a shame it took us so long to do it. But people can be proud that even in a really, really divided political moment, we found what it took this year to get this law passed. So there is help on the way, and this will all be better a year or two from now than it is today because of that law. All right. Representative Connor Lamb, thank you so much for joining us via phone. I know it's been a very busy morning and early afternoon for you. We appreciate you taking some time to, to talk with us today. Thank you. Bye.